always be a poet, even in prose. The devil's finest trick is to persuade you that he does not exist. The beautiful is always bizarre. Remembering is only a new form of suffering. Be always drunken. Nothing else matters. That is the only question. If you would not feel the horrible burden of time weighing on your shoulders and crushing you to the earth, be drunken continually. Drunken with what? With wine, with poetry, or with virtue, as you will, but be drunken. And if sometimes, on the stairs of a palace, or on the green side of a ditch, or in the dreary solitude of your own room, you should awaken, and the drunkenness be half or wholly slipped away from you. Ask of the wind, or of the wave, or of the star, or of the bird, or of the clock, or of whatever flies, or sighs, or rocks, or sings, or speaks, ask what hour it is. And the wind, wave, star, bird, clock will answer you. It is the hour to be drunken. If the word doesn't exist, invent it, but first be sure it doesn't exist. What strange phenomena we find in a great city. All we need do is stroll about with our eyes open. Life swarms with innocent monsters. Strangeness is a necessary ingredient in beauty. There are women who inspire you with the desire to conquer them and to take your pleasure of them. But this one fills you only with the desire to die slowly beneath her gaze. Extract the eternal from the ephemeral. Life has but one true charm, the charm of the game. But what if we're indifferent to whether we win or lose? I have cultivated my hysteria with pleasure and terror. My heart is lost. The beasts have eaten it. What can an eternity of damnation matter to someone who has felt, if only for a second, the infinity of delight? Genius is no more than childhood recaptured at will. Childhood equipped now with man's physical means to express itself and with the analytical mind 
that enables it to bring order into the sum of experience. Involuntarily amassed. Evil is committed without effort, naturally, fatally. Goodness is always the product of some art. Even when she walks, one would believe that she dances. You walk on corpses, beauty undismayed. I am unable to understand how a man of honor can take a newspaper in his hands without a shudder of disgust. A multitude of small delights constitutes happiness. The poet is a kinsman in the clouds who scoffs at archers loves a stormy day, but on the ground, among the hooting crowds, he cannot walk. His wings are in the way. I have felt the wind on the wing of madness. As a small child, I felt in my heart two contradictory feelings, the horror of life and the ecstasy of life. He who looks through an open window sees fewer things than he who looks through a closed window. I set out to discover the why of it and to transform my pleasure into knowledge. We are weighed down every moment by the conception and the sensation of time. And there are but two means of escaping and forgetting this nightmare, pleasure and work. Pleasure consumes us, work strengthens us, let us choose. But the true voyagers are only those who leave just to be leaving. Hearts light like balloons, they never turn aside from their fatality and without knowing why, they always say, let's go. To handle a language skillfully is to practice a kind of evocative sorcery. I can barely conceive of a type of beauty in which there is no melancholy. Let us beware of common folk, common sense, sentiment, inspiration, and the obvious. I should like the fields tinged with red, the rivers yellow, and the trees painted blue. Nature has no imagination. Through the unknown, we will find the new. To be away from home and yet to feel oneself everywhere at home. To see the world, to be at the center of the world and yet to remain hidden from the world. Impartial natures which the tongue 
can but clumsily define. The spectator is a prince who everywhere rejoices in his incognito. An oasis of horror in a desert of boredom. Do you remember the sight we saw, my soul, that soft summer morning, rounding a turning in the path? On a bed scattered with stones, its legs in the air, like a woman in need, burning its wedding poisons, like a fountain with its rhythmic sobs. I could hear it clearly flowing with a long, murmuring sound, but I touch my body in vain to find the wound. I am the vampire of my own heart, one of the great outcasts, condemned to eternal laughter, who can no longer smile. And yet, to wine, to opium even, I prefer the elixir of your lips, on which love flaunts itself. And in the wasteland of desire, your eyes afford the wells to slake my thirst. Forest, I fear you. In my ruined heart, your roaring wakens the same agony as in cathedrals when the organ moans. And from the depths I hear that I am damned. Unable to suppress love, the church wanted at least to disinfect it, and it created marriage. The beautiful is always strange. This life is a hospital in which each patient is possessed by the desire to change beds. One wants to suffer in front of the stove, and another believes that he will get well near the window. It always seems to me that I will be better off where I am not, and this question of moving about is one that I discuss endlessly with my soul. Tell me, my poor chilled soul, what would you think about going to live in Lisbon? It's warm there. That city is on the shore, and they say that it's built all out of marble. A landscape made out of light and mineral and liquid to reflect them. My soul does not reply. Because you love rest so much, combined with the spectacle of movement, do you want to come and live in Holland, that beautifying land? Perhaps you will be entertained in that country whose image you have so often admired in museums. My soul remains mute. Not a word. Is my soul dead? Have you then reached such a degree of torpor that you are only happy with your illness? If that's the case, let us flee towards lands that are analogies of death. We'll pack our bags and go even further, to the far end of the Baltic, even further from life, if that's possible. Let's go live at the Pole. 
There the sun only grazes the earth obliquely, and the slow alteration of light and darkness suppresses variety and augments monotony, that half of nothingness. There we could take long baths in the shadows, while to entertain us the aurora borealis send us from time to time its pink sheaf of sparkling light, like the reflection of fireworks in hell. Finally, my soul explodes, and wisely she shrieks at me. It doesn't matter where, it doesn't matter where, as long as it's out of this world. And drunk with my own madness, I shouted at him furiously, Make life beautiful. Make life beautiful. It is this admirable, this immortal, instinctive sense of beauty that leads us to look upon the spectacle of this world as a glimpse, a correspondence with heaven, our unquenchable thirst for all that lies beyond, all that life reveals, is the liveliest proof of our immortality. It is both by poetry and through poetry, by music and through music, that the soul dimly describes the splendors beyond the tomb And when an exquisite poem brings tears to your eyes, those tears are not a proof only of overabundant joy. They bear witness, rather, to an impatient melancholy, clamant demand by our nerves, our nature, exiled in imperfection. which would fain enter into immediate possession while still on this earth of a revealed paradise. The man who is unable to people his solitude is equally unable to be alone in a bustling crowd. The poet enjoys the incomparable privilege of being able to be himself or someone else as he chooses. The solitary and thoughtful stroller finds a singular intoxication in this universal communion. What men call love is a very small, restricted, feeble thing compared with this ineffable orgy. This divine prostitution of the soul giving itself entirely to the unexpected as it comes along. A healthy man can go without food for two days, but not without poetry. Relate comic things in pompous fashion. Irregularity. In other words, the unexpected. The surprising, the astonishing, are essential to and characteristic of beauty. Two fundamental literary qualities. Supernaturalism and irony. The blend of the grotesque and the tragic are attractive to the mind, as is discord to blasé ears. Imagine a canvas for a lyrical, magical farce. 
for a pantomime and translate it into a serious novel. Drown the whole thing in an abnormal, dreamy atmosphere. In the atmosphere of great days. The region of pure poetry.